this video will explain the definition of a well-formed formula for predicate logic. So it starts out just the same as in propositional logic. So any capital letter is a well-formed formula. So P, Q, etc. Those are all going to be well-formed formulas. A dash followed by a well-formed formula is a well-formed formula. So the formula not P, that's a well-formed formula. So we still have all of these things. A left-hand grouper followed by a well-formed formula, followed by a dyadic connective, followed by another well-formed formula, followed by a matching right-hand grouper is a well-formed formula. So again, this is the same from propositional logic. So the formula parenthesis P wedge Q would be a well-formed formula according to this definition because we have a left-hand grouper and then we have a well-formed formula and then we have a dyadic connective and then we have another well-formed formula and then we have another parenthesis. Now, according to the definition of a well-formed formula, technically we need outer parentheses on this. However, we really don't. So this is actually a well-formed formula as well. So we don't need the outermost parentheses. However, if we have something like P arrow Q arrow R, well, that needs parentheses, um, either here or around the P arrow Q. But we don't need, or technically, according to the definition, we would need an outermost set of parentheses, but we really don't. We can drop that convention. Um, so it's in the definition, but we don't actually follow that part. And then finally, a formula that can be generated from a well-formed formula by prefixing a quantifier whose variable does not occur in the well-formed formula and replacing at least one occurrence of, the, of a constant by the variable. So that is really confusing. I feel like that is probably the most confusing way that you could have stated this, um, Pospisil. Um, the, these are taken directly from Pospisil. But so what's going on is that, so formulas, we also can have a formula, let's say, if PA, then QA. So that will also be a well-formed formula. So the formula PA is a well-formed formula. So in addition to capital letters, it really should say here, or a um, predicate with a single singular term in place of the variable. Um, not PA will be a well-formed formula. So here we have, but let's focus on the formula if PA, then QA. So this is a well-formed formula, and we can, what we can do is we can prefix a quantifier on that. So let's say for all X. And so this is a quantifier whose variable does not occur in the well-formed formula, and then replace at least one occurrence of a constant by the variable. So if we could replace, let's say, the A with an X, well, then that would be a well-formed formula. Or we could replace both of them, and that's going to be more common that you're going to have variables uh, on both of the quantifiers. If there's more than one quantifier under the, sorry, more than one predicate under the quantifier, it's going to be the most common that both of those predicates um, have variables, not um, singular terms in them. So you can see this is how it's generated. 
But basically, the upshot of Clause 4 is that it's a well-formed formula if you have a quantifier and then you have um, predicates under the scope of that quantifier that have the same variable as the quantifier. So, for instance, the formula for all x, p, y would not be a well-formed formula because it would violate clause 4 because the occurrence um, of the constant is replaced by a different variable than the one in the quantifier. So we can't have that. Um, likewise, if we had for all x, p, a, arrow, q, a. So if under the quantifier we had a formula that didn't have any variables, that would be not that would be considered a not well formed formula by clause four. So that's bad, that's bad, this is good. So I hope that makes more sense out of clause four, because clause four is pretty darn confusing in the way it's stated. Okay, and then finally we have our closure clause, which says that no formula is a well formed formula unless it's being so follows from clauses 1 through 4. So unless it can be generated using some combination of clauses 1 through 4. So the definition of a well-formed formula has the following consequences. So every quantifier in a well-formed formula binds some variable. Um, in addition to the occurrence of the variable within the quantifier. So what they're talking about there is the same thing I was talking about just a minute ago where I said, well, if you have the formula for all x, if PA then QA, that's not a well-formed formula because here you have a quantifier um, that doesn't bind any variables here under, under that. There's, there's also the variable within the quantifier. That's what they're talking about here. Um, but the formula for all x, if px, then qa, that's fine because it does bind a variable. There's a... Um, yeah. So every variable in a well-formed formula is bound by some quantifier. So that means that when we looked at like the scope of the quantifier, um, we talked about this, about free variables. So if I have this formula, if for all x, px, then qx, that's not a well-formed formula because the only this x here in the qx is free. It's not bound by the quantifier. Now, if I put this whole thing in parentheses, then it's a well-formed formula because every variable is bound by the quantifier. Okay, and then the last consequence is that no variable in a well-formed formula is bound by two quantifiers. So you couldn't have something like this. For all x, there exists an x, px. You couldn't have something like that. That doesn't make any sense. So it has to bind. You can have multiple quantifiers, but they need to bind, they need to First of all, you shouldn't have x on both of them. So you could have, for all x, there exists a y such that if px, then qy. You could have something like that. And that would be a well-formed formula because the px is going to be bound by the for all x and the qy is going to be bound by there exists a y. This is not going to be a formulation you're really going to see, but this would be a well-formed formula. 
this is the sort of thing that you get to see in later chapters um, in the book that we're not going to get to when we get to um, relational um, predicates. So we'll have, if we got to relational predicates, we would have statements like, for all x and for all y, sorry, that should be a y, x likes y. So we could have statements like that. We're not going to get to things like that, so don't really worry about that.